Welcome my dear listener to a brand new series of the New Life program. This is Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. I'm your host, Tileno Diambo. Today we have a great program lined up just for you, dear listener. Epilepsy is a very chronic disease that requires an immediate medical attention before it worsens or gets out of control. Musavi Muteshi will be enlightening us on the effects of seizure or epilepsy and some of the ways in which one can be able to prevent him or herself. Steve Rundu will also come in with the stewardship later on. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. All the hearts put all his waiting and watching. Watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Honestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling all sinners. now divert our attention to Musavi Muteshi so that she can educate us more concerning the disease known as epilepsy. Stay put. Hello listener, welcome to our program Health Nuggets. I am your presenter, Musavi Muteshi. Today, I want to talk with you about seizures and epilepsy. We were created with an incredibly complex brain that manage all of the functions of our body. A seizure is a brain disorder that occurs when, for reasons doctors do not yet completely understand, the electrical signals that our brain cells send out as instructions surge from nerve to nerve much faster than normal. These surges can, at times, produce temporary mental confusion, leaving us blankly staring into space. During severe episodes, the surges can cause a complete loss of consciousness. While the body stiffens and shakes, we lose bladder control and we bite our tongue. Doctors classify seizures as being either focal or generalized. If the abnormal brain activity is located in just one part of the brain, the abnormalities are called focal or partial seizures. 
Seizures that involve the entire brain are called generalized seizures. 2% of people would experience at least one unprovoked seizure during their lifetime. If they have two or more unprovoked seizures, they are considered to have epilepsy. While the symptoms of a seizure vary depending on the type of seizure one has, in most cases a person with epilepsy will have the same type of seizure each time, so their symptoms will be similar from one seizure episode to the next. Numerous tests are used to diagnose seizures and epilepsy. Simple blood tests can sometimes identify infections as a cause of seizure episodes. The most common test used to diagnose epilepsy is an EEG, a recording of the brain's electrical activity. Abnormalities will often be seen in the pattern of brain waves of an epileptic, even between seizure episodes. Why do people develop seizures in epilepsy? Brain damage caused by such things as head trauma or a stroke is a risk factor. Medical conditions in a pregnant mother such as poor nutrition or a brain infection prior to delivery can be damaging enough to the baby's brain to cause epilepsy. Some types of epilepsy run in families, so there may be a genetic component. A lack of sleep, stress and the use of alcohol and tobacco are yet other powerful triggers for seizures. So if you suffer seizures, be sure to get enough sleep, manage stress as much as possible and avoid alcohol and tobacco products to decrease your seizure activity. Home therapies can be of help in preventing seizure activity. Some children with epilepsy have been able to reduce the frequency of their seizures by eating a strict diet that is high in fats and low in starches and sugars. The diet is called a ketogenic diet and it causes the body to break down fats using them for energy instead of sugar. The use of these fats instead of sugar as an energy source for the brain has been shown to reduce the number and frequency of seizure episodes. Even mild seizures require treatment because they can be very dangerous if they occur at critical times. As an example, a seizure that causes a loss of consciousness while making driving a car or operating heavy equipment extremely dangerous. If you fall during even a mild seizure, you can injure your head. If your seizure lasts more than five minutes, you will have an increased risk of permanent brain damage or even death. Formal medical treatment for seizures begins with taking anti-seizure medicines. Half of all people diagnosed with epilepsy become seizure-free with the first medicine given them as treatment. Unfortunately, all anti-seizure medicines have side effects. These side effects include making you feel tired and dizzy making you lose muscle coordination, and they can cause the development of speech problems. More severe, but thankfully less common, side effects include depression and thoughts of suicide. If medicines don't work, your doctor may propose surgery as a treatment. During surgery for seizures, a surgeon will remove that area of the brain that is causing the seizures. Surgery is most successful when tests show that the seizures originate in a small, well-defined area of the brain that doesn't interfere with vital functions such as speech, language or hearing. If you are the parent or guardian of a child who suffers epilepsy, learn the correct way to handle them when a seizure occurs. Gently roll them onto one side and put something soft under their head. Loosen anything tight around their neck. Don't try to put your fingers or anything else in their mouth. No one has ever swallowed their tongue during a seizure. Don't attempt to waken the child by shouting at or by shaking them and don't try to restrain a child suffering a seizure. If the child is moving, clear away dangerous objects, call for medical aid and watch over them until medical personnel arrive. Watch the child closely so that you can provide details as to what happened and the time the seizure with your watch. Most importantly, keep calm and reassure others nearby. It is important to understand that epilepsy is much more than just a series of seizures for the patient who suffers the condition. The disorder is often measured in personal terms. There are challenges in school, uncertainties about social and employment situations, 
limitations on driving a car, and questions about independent living. Family members may also struggle with how to best help their loved one and maintain their family life. Everyone often feels isolated, and they fear that no one truly understands their struggle. If you are dealing with epilepsy and are looking for someone who understands, find an epilepsy group in your area. People are often able to learn more from other patients, parents, and family members than from any other source of available information. Health Nuggets is written by Dr. Richard Uckel, a medical doctor working in the United States. The medical views expressed in this program are his and may differ for your particular health needs. If you need medical advice, please consult a medical professional in your area. Thank you once again for listening. This is Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope. Send us your views and concerns about this program. Do so by writing to the producer, Adventist World Radio, PO Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. Sweet on oh prayer, sweet on oh prayer, that calls me from a world of care, and bids me on my Father's throne, may call my wants and wishes known, in seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief, and often scared the tempters near by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, thy will shall my petition bear. To him whose truth and faithfulness Engage the waiting soul to bless And since he bids me seek his face Believe his word and trust his grace I'll cast on him my every care And wait for thee Sweet hour of bread, sweet hour of bread, may I thy consolation share, till from Mount Pisgah's lofty heights I view my hope and take my flight. In my immortal flesh I'll rise to seize the And shout while passing through the air Farewell, farewell, sweet star of prayer Steve Rundu will now take over and talk to us about an interesting topic on the stewardship series known as Jonathan Steward of Friendship. Be blessed. Jonathan, steward of friendship. Our key text this day comes from the book of First Samuel, chapter 18, reading verse 1 through to 4. After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day Saul kept David with him and did not let him return to his father's house. And Jonathan made a covenant with David. Because he loved him as himself, Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow and his belt. 
The young David had just saved the day by killing the Philistine giant Goliath, and Saul drafted the young hero to join his staff. Jonathan loved David as himself and pledged his loyalty and friendship in a covenant, which he confirmed by giving David the shirt of his back as well as his robe, sword, bow and belt. Jonathan's covenant with David became a covenant that will serve generations after them. Author Eugene Peterson explains the sacramental nature of friendship and how Jonathan's friendship was recognition of God's blessing on David. Friendship is a much and estimated aspect of spirituality. It's every bit as significant as prayer and fasting. Like the sacramental use of water and bread and wine, friendship makes what common in human experience and turns it into something holy. Friendship with David complicated Jonathan's life enormously. He risked losing his father's favor and willingly sacrificed his own royal future. Jonathan's friendship was essential to David's life. It is highly unlikely that David could have persisted in serving Saul without the friendship of Jonathan. Jonathan, in striking contrast to his father, the son God in David, comprehended the danger and difficulty of his anointing and made a covenant of friendship with him. Jonathan's friendship entered David's soul in a way that Saul hatred never did. We don't usually think of friendship as a gift we must steward. We more often think of it as a benefit for ourselves. But Peterson elaborates on the sacrificial nature of David and Jonathan's friendship. Jonathan lived out his covenantal friendship with David in a hard circumstances. The friendship covenant served God's purpose in David, but Jonathan got little or no emotional reward. Jonathan never saw David again after helping him escape from Saul. For the rest of his life, he served in Saul's court, fighting with his father in the Philistine wars and accompanying him presumably on the David hunts. But the circumstances didn't cancel out the covenant. Rather, the covenant was used in the purpose of God to overcome the circumstances. Many a covenantal friendship is lived out similarly in Saul's court, in marital, family work, cultural conditions and that are hostile to avoid intimacy. But it's the covenant, not the conditions, that carries the day. Jonathan's stewardship made all the difference in God's plans. It's a great thing to be a Jonathan. Without Jonathan, David was at risk of either abandoning his vocation and returning to the simple life of tending sheep or developing a murderous spirit of retaliation to get even with the man who was despising the best that was within him. He did neither. He accepted Jonathan's friendship and in receiving it, received confirmation of Samuel's earlier anointing to king work and the God-dominated imagination that made it possible to live and by God's spirit in song and story. How is stewardship of friendship an active endeavor? In what ways does friendship allow others to fulfill their destinies? And in what ways are friendships covenants? I call upon you this day to look at friendship of whatever nature to be a stewardship relationship. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for the friends that you have provided for us. Lord, teach us how to look at our friends and see a gift from heaven. Father, teach me how to have a covenant with another person, Lord, who is a friend, and keep that covenant in prayer for each other. I have prayed all these things, trusting and believing in the mighty name of our Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, be careful where you
is light. Child is born, and darkness brings your sadness. You need one to punish peace of night. Try Jesus, he never fled our face. All evil is now prevailed. In sunshine, us and us been a pleasure having your company. Don't forget to join us again here at Adventist World Radio, The Voice of Hope. In case you have any comments, suggestions, or opinions, send them to the producer, Adventist World Radio, PO Box 42276, code 00100, Nairobi, Kenya. Our email address is awrnairobi at eau.adventist.org. From the entire New Life production team, we say thank you and be blessed. I have been your presenter, Tileno Diam. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. All the hearts put all his waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home. Come home. Let's